hope you are able to see my screen right yes so uh, krishna uh, so today we will uh, discuss something about your uh, programming okay so okay uh, so basically you know uh, if you ask me do you want like uh, you know you, whether you should be expert in the programming i say no okay so uh, a data scientist is not a programmer or a developer but he is a scientist okay but however he should be able to understand the concept of programming okay because most okay. of the tools what he is using or what he will be using in the future so these tools in the back end they will be writing these programs okay so in order to understand mm -hmm. these are to which function he must use to uh, do certain task okay so for example we have something called concept of algorithms okay which algorithms we need to use which libraries we need to use not only in data analytics it can be in machine learning or anything basically so basically okay. that is the reason why okay so uh, we need to have the concept of programming right <laughs> so basically uh, any idea on programming like c c++ uh, you know something like uh, you know uh, uh, you want to no. no no i don't have any programming prior yeah. knowledge yeah so okay so you don't know even c programming something like you no know, no i think when i was in engineering so we have one subject uh, c so basics i was uh, i have learned but uh, as of now i don't recall okay. no problem. just let me start from scratch okay you come back okay see uh See why we call this Python for data science. See, basically, Python. Uh, there are two popular languages for your data science and analytics. Mm -hmm. One is Python, and there is R. So one is Python, mm -hmm. and there is R. So these two are most popular languages used by the industries of data science and analytics. Why? Because it can be because of its analytical capabilities there are a lot of uh, you know functions or libraries or methods or tools which are available in your python or not to perform analytical capabilities or uh, you know intelligent capabilities okay okay the developer community has developed the algorithms in these languages in such a way that is are quite suitable for this tech data science and ai technologies that is the reason why they prefer python and r as a favorite languages for data science and analytics 95% of your uh, you know almost 100% of your companies both will use python or not it depends upon the projects and the requirements okay, okay. so uh, before discussing about this python or not let us start from scratch what is a language okay mm -hmm. so what is a language we are talking something right that is a language and we are talking english language we are able to understand what you are able to understand what i teach i am able to understand your queries this is nothing but a protocol a set of instructions communicated by two brains sir no, or two hosts or two computers two mobiles okay mm -hmm. so similarly how we uh, interchange our ideas okay with the help of your language english like language which is a high level language understandable by human beings so what is high level language it is understandable human beings basically this high level language is not understandable by your machines like your mobiles or computers what kind of hmm. language they can understand they can understand something called as machine level language that is zeros and ones zero okay so we have different types of language one is called as uh, you know uh, programming languages why we call it a programming language because i can program a machine i can automate certain process with the help of that set of instruction program is nothing but a set of instruction okay, okay. so now basically uh, you know how many types of basically programming languages we have uh, you know three types so one is you know machine level language Machine level language. Another is, uh, you know, assembly level language. Then we have something called as high level language. So, what is this machine level language? It is a very low level language, uh, you know, at uh, hardware level where it can understand only zeros and ones. Okay. okay. Assembly level language. Uh, for example, if you are some electronic background student, you would have worked on these microprocessors, microcontrollers, where they would have used some, uh, you know, mnemonic codes like add, you know, x1, x2, you know. Subtract x1, x2. Okay, like the, these are nothing but you know mnemonic codes. Okay. okay. So where these are uh, you know converted into machine level language with the help of something called as assemblers. Okay. So uh, one minute, Krishna. One minute. Just start sure, back. Sure. Okay.
Rai Krishna. Yeah, that's right. an important call. Okay. So, uh, so we have something called as assembly language where we can uh, write the coding in the form of uh, something called as uh, mnemonics. We call this is uh, add x1, x2, uh, subtract x1, x2 like this, you know. Uh, okay. Basically, uh, your assembly language is uh, one one level more than your machine learning language. And we have something called as high level language where you can write your program uh, in terms of uh, high level language, like, you know, x is equal to in English level language, y is equal okay. to z is equal to x plus y print z so basically this is understandable by you yes or no a human beings yes but yes. i can't understand i can't understand this can be understandable with some training but hmm. this cannot be understandable okay this can yes. be understandable only by machines so basically okay this python c c plus plus java objective c Okay, so Python, R, all these are high-level languages. Okay, JavaScript, n number of languages, mm -hmm. high-level languages. Each and every language is having own purpose. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, whenever you write a program in your high-level languages, it's, it gets converted into your machine-level language with help of your compiler. Compiler is a basically a program where you know it decodes high-level language to machine-level language. Okay, similar okay. to whenever you write your uh, what do you call uh, uh, program in your uh, middle level language, that is assembly level language, we have something called as assembler, okay, which will decode into your machine level. Language. Finally, whatever code you write, whether it is high level script or low level script, middle level script, it, it must be converted into machine level script. Otherwise, your system okay. cannot understand. So, basically, this is about a very brief concept of your programming languages. Now, get, directly we will get into uh, your high level languages okay? Uh, okay so this is how you know uh, you have a hardware uh, at, the, at the end of the system where you have a these are all high level languages okay mm -hmm. uh, high level languages which gets converted into assembly and assembly is converted to machine directly it gets uh, you know so you know it gets understandable by your hardware in the form of zero sum ones okay? okay so now so uh, let us try to uh, and these are all different high level languages we have python r java php okay so go ruby swift object you see it's used for your apple if you are using apple operating apple laptop or apple mobile phone you have something called as ios ios okay. is a system where that operating system has been designed and developed with the help of your object okay fine mm -hmm. so similarly uh, you know uh, python Python programming, as I told you, Python and R, these are the more popular languages for your data analytics. Okay, okay. because of its very easy user friendly, even LKG students can also understand what is Python. It's very easy mm -hmm. compared to others. Okay, so uh, it's an object oriented programming, but however, it is very easy compared to other programming like Java and all. Okay, okay. Java, you know, write more, you know, uh, even you have, we can study your data science with the help of Java. We have something called as data science with Java. Okay, but mm -hmm. But Java is it's not like absolute. But it's a very difficult, you know, like uh, uh, to understand. You should have a strong uh, coding knowledge, and and mm -hmm. you know it's very difficult to implement the tools also. That is the reason why they most of the companies they shifted to Python and R. Compared to R, your Python is having rich in libraries. Okay, uh, related to your uh, what you call data science and analytics. Okay, so mm -hmm. it is mostly used in machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence, big data. Big data is nothing but your huge amount of data. Okay. It's about your uh, huge amount of data. So, uh, in terms of terabyte, petabytes, then robotics. Okay. So, similarly, R is rich in your analytical, statistical analytics. You know, it is also used in your data science. Uh, it has been invented in 1993. It is most mostly used for data cleaning or data banging purposes. Okay. Like mm -hmm. your. So, basically, it is also both are uh, platform independent. You can uh, just uh, ex uh, write your program uh, uh, in one system and you can execute your program on another system. Okay. So, how can you get more and more knowledge on your Python? This is your Bible of your Python. So, directly, this is the official website of your Python, docs.python.r. Okay, so this is the official website of your Python. See here, simple of Python, where you can start studying of your Python. So, what is your Python? How can you develop your uh, first program? Lot, lot, mm -hmm. lot. If you want to become expert in Python, this is the only source. Okay, so. Okay. <coughs> so Using Python as a kind of if statements, okay, you can just go through this and you can get into this. Okay, this is one thing. This is a Bible basically. If you want any, uh, what do you call it? Uh, 
question what you if you got struck at any point of time you can get into this okay okay so now uh, so let us discuss something about ides what is this ides basically uh, IDE is nothing but integrated development environment. See, what is this integrated develop the integrated development environment? See, for example, if you want to write one letter, if you want to type one letter, what do you do? You will open your Microsoft Word, right? If you mm -hmm. want to store some data, what do you do? You you have some Excel file, right? Okay, you do an Excel file. If you want to write one email, you will open Gmail, Compose and all, where you have all the tools to attach attach your document. You can uh, what do you call the uh, have a subject name. Uh, you know, from BC, CCC, all these things. These are basically these are all integrated together to form an application. Yes or no? Why it is integrated yes. to serve some purpose? Similarly, you have something called as IDEs for your Python and R. Basically, you know there are uh, where why we call it as integrated development environment. It's called integrated development. That is, whatever the tools that is necessary for the developer or the data scientist in order to develop the programs. Okay, in your Python, those tools will be available in one tool, basically. That is the reason. That is the reason why we call it as integrated development environment. Okay, so there are two popular IDEs. See, basically, your IDEs, IDE is nothing but your software, basically. Okay, we have mm -hmm. two IDEs. One is, uh, you know, uh, what you call a local IDE, where you need to install, download that IDE in your system, where it will take huge amount of time to install, and it it will occupy space also. Basically, it is absolute. No one is using your local IDs nowadays. 99% uh, most of the industries they use though, they go for cloud IDs. So how you are open defined tool, data cleaning tool is using client server architecture uh, to connect to the server to clean the data, okay, where you are working on the client client side as a user interface. Similarly, your IDs also will follow the client server architecture. Whenever you download uh, your ID, so you are facing the client of the ID, you are not facing the server. It will correct to the server, it will execute the program, again it will show you the output in the client. So basically these are platform independent and it is very robust, better performance also. So basically, you know, we have two types of, uh, you know, ID, two types of vendors for Python IDs. Okay, so in this class we'll discuss about Python and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, yes, I will discuss about R also, but in the latest stages. Okay. okay. They won't ask you R, it's not mandatory. But you must know what is our R Studio and all. R Studio is our IDE for R. We'll discuss in the later stages. Let us focus on Python IDEs as of now. Okay. So we have two types of uh, two vendors, uh, two companies. You know, uh, for who provides Python IDEs. One is Jupyter Anaconda. Anaconda. Another is uh, Google. Okay. So the product of Anaconda is Jupyter Notebook. The product of Google is Google Colab. What is it? Google Colab. So how to how to install, how to get into this uh, Jupyter Notebook? Very simple. Go to your Google. Go to your Google. Just type Anaconda Jupyter Notebook online. Okay. Now you find something called as Anaconda Cloud. Okay. So this is the website I need where if you want to launch my Jupyter Notebook, Anaconda Cloud, okay? So just click on this. So just I'll share this, uh, just make a note of this uh, URL. I'll share this in your uh, chat. chat window. Sure, thank you. Okay. Make, make a note of this. Now just click on uh, Notebooks or just you can click on Get Started. And get started click on launch notebooks you want to code online yes click on launch notebooks notebook is a place where you write your program click okay. on launch server when you click on launch server see here your client is client of jupyter notebook is getting connected to the server so it follows something called as client server architecture never you execute the program on your system that is the reason why for data science you doesn't need any high-end laptops okay mm -hmm. everything is executed in the server you can use your server for a certain amount of time, then you can purchase it if you want. Okay. Now, basically, you have, this is the interface of your uh, Jupyter Notebook, basically. Okay. So, uh, left side, you are having some pane where you can store all your files. Okay. And this is the middle, uh, you, this is nothing but your Jupyter file, Jupyter Notebook file. 
where you are able to see the dot extension dot ipynb it's nothing but the python notebook file okay so uh, this is nothing but your text file where you can write a you know a program like this very small program okay so where x is equal to one what is x x is a variable okay x is a variable where i can store a constant called one how can i store one in x x is equal to one where equal to this is nothing but your assignment operator which is used to assign constant called one to x when i say x is equal to one what is the value in x it is one so y is equal to two similarly i want to add these two z is equal to x plus y now i want to print the content in z so what i'll do i'll use print function very simple print of z so when i use print of z whatever the content is there in the variable called z it gets printed now see okay. here it's a text it's like your notepad basically mm -hmm. just like type the program but i can't execute okay so if you want to save your program you can save or just you can just right click rename right click rename my first program So now, what you can do? Just you can copy this. You can copy this. You can right click, copy. Now you can get into something called as uh, notebook. Basically, this is your uh, notebook. How can I open your notebook? Just click on plus. When you click on plus, you get all these you know files. Basically, I want the notebook where I can execute the programs. Just click on like the programs. Okay. Now this is your notebook where it is prompting. You are you are seeing the prompt, right? So this is where this is not there, but your cell where I can execute your program. Just whatever the program I copy, it just I will paste here. Okay, right? Just I will paste. Okay. Control V. Now the go the program got copied, or here itself I can type the program where x is equal to one. Okay, y is equal to two. Okay, z is equal to x plus yes. y. Okay, enter print x plus y. Print x plus y. So if you hit enter again, it go to the next line. So how to execute this program? You are able to see this uh, oh, arrow button, right? You can click. So when you put a, you know, you get a tool tip. Like you can also click shift plus enter. When you click shift plus enter or click on this, the program gets executed. See what is just you are able to write the program in your Jupyter notebook. But but when you click here, this Jupyter notebook, this is nothing but your client, you know, uh, client environment. This is nothing but your user interface ui interface okay but it's okay. not a problem. so when you execute it gets connected to the server at the back end it uh, it calculates the uh, sum of x, x and y it shows you the result at the output console just click on this execute okay so it is showing the error here so how why it is showing error because it is not able to understand what is this is how it, you can see the errors in your jupyter notebook i am not able to understand what is print okay mm -hmm. that is your system is a case sensitive Okay, your system is your case sensitive. Okay, so okay. just uh, -I again, let me execute. Now you are able to get three. Fine, right? So, okay, this is your output console. Now, if you want, uh, you know, uh, automatically a new cell has been added. Okay, fine. Now, basically, you are able to see something called as uh, what you call uh, uh, three stars here. What is this three stars? It's nothing but your Anaconda assistance, it's nothing but your generative AI tool like your chat gpt cap Gemini, by the anaconda itself okay okay so previously it was not there now they have uh, this is nothing but your uh, you know uh, generative ai for enabling your generative ai in data science technologies so nowadays no one is writing the program no one you know uh, you know no need to worry about your programming part because okay. anaconda assistance you can take the help of anaconda assistance you can ask it anything it will write the program just when you click okay. on this you know so it will see here this gets uh, basically uh, you know prompted uh, you know, if you click on this, it goes again. If you want, it, it, you can you can just minimize or maximize. Now, here you have something called as how you ask uh, Chat GPT or your copilot. You know, you can ask your anaconda assistance what you want. Okay, so uh, I want to uh, uh, write a program to add two numbers. Better than me, it will write the program. Okay, in a proper standard. Just click enter. Okay, so see here it has given a program for you. Here is a simple program which has two numbers. You can execute this program or you can copy this program. Just when you execute this program, it gets executed here itself. It is asking you to enter the first number is two, hit enter, second number is three, hit enter, the output is five. Or you can copy this program and you can uh, click on plus here to add a new cell. Okay, so you can copy this again. You can 
execute this okay so 4 plus 5 is 6 so like this you can use your anaconda assistance use your anaconda assistance okay okay uh, your python jupyter is a very 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 powerful tool okay compared to your open refine compared to your power bi compared to anything because with uh, with programming i can do anything basically okay all right so whatever the tool is doing i can do with the help of your program so in the previous class you did a lot of data cleaning activities right mm -hmm. here also i can do data cleaning activities with the help of your python libraries see libraries are something like your library when i go to your college library you have different racks right okay so you have different departments like computer science department okay in that you have different uh, what do you call it uh, books like uh, programming books database books yes. programming books again we have c c plus plus java books okay see what is this view what is this app that is every library is having set of uh, what do you call it uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, departments right okay so in every department you have set of books similarly uh, library is nothing but your set of functions set of functions okay one function okay. is used to remove the null value okay one function is used to uh, remove, remove the duplicates one function is used to what you call the uh, uh, what you call replace the values uh, or uh, format the data so like this group of functions we call functions function is nothing but a set of code all these things i will be discussing in your classes in your python classes step by step so okay. we need different functions to clean your data so all these functions are grouped together to form a library to form a library okay so like this we have four kinds of libraries which are very popular libraries in your python where every data scientist and data analyst must know what are they they are pandas numpy's matplotlib and cmon okay these are four uh, very important libraries there are many libraries but apart from that these are very important libraries where pandas are very important to clean your data for example i can ask your anaconda so can you uh, write a program okay to clean to remove null values from order data set see i don't know even it doesn't know what is order's data set it doesn't have that information but still it can assume the data of order's data set that is it is having some order id that id this id it can assume the data and it can show you the program just click enter it will write the program by itself see here this is a program so to remove null values from the data set you can use the drop now function from the pandas library in the python so all these things will will explore in future classes okay okay basically you know it is using some uh, it is importing pandas you know uh, you know it is reading it is using some function called read csv if you want to read the data from the csv file this is a function okay so but uh, in your power bi or any other tools or open refine tool within a fraction of a second we read the data yes or no okay yes how we are reading the data they are also using the same coding backend okay in order to understand that coding you must uh, you, you should have the knowledge of python okay so mm -hmm. like this you can use your anaconda assistance uh, nowadays anaconda assistance with it, it's like your uh, savior okay no need to worry at any point of time regarding your python programming everything you can get from anaconda assistance but the name itself suggesting it is an assistance it will assist you but it won't solve your purpose what okay. solve your purpose you should have the knowledge then you can correlate your knowledge with your anaconda assistance and get the things done now in the left hand panel you have something called as uh, you know upload button you can upload your data sets see you, you created a number of data sets real time data sets right amazon mm -hmm. all these dapshara data sets you can upload upload your data set your jupyter notebook and you can start clearing the data you can start visualizing the data okay you can create n number of things you can start training the machine learning algorithms okay n number of things okay so i can say the complete uh, span of your data science or the complete career of your data science you can depend upon your jupyter notebook right so so click on uh, upload mm -hmm. <clears throat> you can upload so uh, let me upload some uh, what do you call the uh, apshara data set okay so so apshara raw data set double click so when upload see here the apshara raw data set has been uploaded it's in excel file just double click on this now see here this is apshara raw data set okay so yes all these things okay now if you want to read this data set you can get into your program Okay, my first program. You can get into your program. Okay, so already we uh, use this function. Okay, read function, right? Okay, so mm -hmm. and, uh, how to read uh, what you call the 
write a program program to read data set from csv file whether it is a csv or excel file that you should know mm -hmm. okay so this is the program read.csv so what i'll do just i will copy this and paste this okay so uh, don't worry about this import and all basically you are importing the libraries called pandas okay i will explain you in details just okay. now see here here instead of this you can see the path here just you can click on this right click okay so copy path so okay. just remove this and paste here uh -huh. okay fine okay that's it. that's it nothing to be done now whatever you are seeing the hash codes right these are all comments it doesn't executes this is for your understanding guys okay only these will execute okay fine uh -huh. now so df is a variable where df is a variable where i am storing the data in the variable called df complete data set i'm reading i'm reading the csv file that is upshal the raw data set with help of read underscore csv function or method it's a predefined function in your python okay and i'm dumping that in a variable called df now i want to print df okay print df okay now let me execute it okay shift enter or just click on this now see here the complete data whatever data you have in your excel file it gets related to you hope you understood right yes got it okay. now this is how we leverage your python programming uh, you know for your data science for your data science okay. this is your jupyter notebook the same look and feel you will get for your jupyter colab also okay so uh, basically uh, just how to get into your uh, so how to save your file so here right click again uh, uh rename you can download this you can uh, rename you can copy whatever you want you can so read read the uh, what is called uh, read data set read underscore up data set right. don't worry again i will uh, tell you all these things in a detail just it's for your understanding okay so now uh, you can do a number of things if you want you know you can download this file Okay, so when you download this file, so it gets downloaded like this. See here, dot ipn uh, ipynb. So when you double click, it gets uh, you know opened in your Jupyter notebook only. Okay, mm -hmm. like so like this, you can share this. You can open new browser, whatever you want. You can you can download. You can share. Copy a file. You can new file. Okay, so you, if you want to organize it in folders, you can folder. Okay, like this. This is nothing but your Jupyter notebook IDE. Okay. Okay. So, so basically. Open. Uh, this csv file has making changes into programming or the as it is it was showing yeah so csv file uh, you know uh, uh, that's what you know we are incorporating the csv file in the program and uh, telling to your python to extract the data okay from mm. the csv file and print on your console okay, so, okay. so when i this is when i click on this this is nothing but your data the same data you are seeing here In your console. Okay. Okay. And you are not. It is not showing all data. It is only showing very less data. First five records it will show. See here, last five records it will show. Hmm. So it won't show you all the data basically. Only first five records. This is the first five records. Then these are the last five records. Okay. And this is a continuation. These are the columns. First column, second column, third column, fourth column. See how to format your output in Python. This is also in there. Okay. Okay. So everything you know, all the all the columns will be coming on the one page. All things will stay mm -hmm. in the Python part program. Okay. Okay. So uh, this is about your Jupyter notebook. Now we'll discuss something about your Google Colab. Google Colab is also a competitor for Jupyter. So Anaconda. So base uh, where you know just you type your uh, Google Colab. Okay. This is your URL. Google Colab. dot research. dot com. Google. dot com. Okay. So uh, see basically uh, this is a pop up. As soon as you open your Google Colab, already we did some programs previously. That is the reason why you want to get into this, or you want to get you want to get your file from GitHub. Uh, you know, uh, you need to create one uh, GitHub account. Okay, basically I will help you how to create it. Where you need to, where you need to showcase all your demonstrations like Python files or whatever you did till now. Okay. Then Google Drive. Okay. So you want to upload from Google Drive? Examples already we have some. Uh, what do you call that? Uh, 
different different examples okay so uh, you know uh, basically you can download this example and you can work on it okay so or you want to upload your own file so all these things uh, you know basically i don't want to do anything just click on cancel okay now this is about your uh, basically google collab uh, where you can learn by your own see basically data science okay so machine learning more resources when number of things are there okay so apart from that okay so uh, uh, let me like uh, how to get into your google collab how to write a program in your google collab so just need to click on file click on new notebook so when you click on new notebook your google collab uh, you know client user interface gets opened before you the same how jupiter gets connected to your server this also gets connected to your server when you execute the program so okay. this is your user interface okay the same as jupiter okay now mm -hmm. here, there you have anaconda assistance here you, it is asking generate with ai like this you know right that is the only difference that's it mm -hmm. okay. here you can see here gemini gemini is incorporated here yes okay. gemini is nothing but generate ai tool okay so uh, because uh, anaconda assistance is uh, its own product uh, but since this google collab is from google itself they have incorporated uh, gemini okay oh. but unfortunately we don't have any uh, what do you call ide from microsoft to execute pythons okay so uh, here itself we can ask a prompt gemini uh, okay write a program uh, to add uh, two numbers okay so it will uh, give the program yes okay so basically this is a program where you can copy this program then you can come here okay so you can paste this you can just click on this arrow mark to execute it okay so okay. see it is connected to the server here it is connected to the server it is taking mm -hmm. time so first time mm -hmm. next time when i execute it is very fast because already it's connected and it okay. shows you how much space it has given for you in the google server you know uh, to see here it executed <coughs> it shows the result as 8 okay so now see here this is the ramp space it has this much ramp space it has given okay so this is a disk space this this much disk space it has you are utilizing in your google cloud okay okay so this is nothing but your user interface of your uh, google collab it is also a very powerful tool okay just you can rename here it's very simple also my first pro okay so like this you can just uh, what do you call even you have a text file so you can click on this and you can add uh, you can write the program and you can uh, what do you call execute like your jupyter notebook if you want to add new code click on code and you can start execute the program okay so mm -hmm. all these basically uh, look and feel is similar okay but uh, functionality is different uh, functionality is similar but look and feel is different actually. okay mm -hmm. so you have different variables okay if you have any variables you can save here okay so uh, basically if you want to folders files you can have here you want to upload any file sample data so just uh, again i want to upload by apshala okay so apshala so, so this file again i can upload so the data has been uploaded you can just double click on this so you can view the data in your google collab Copy file. So some issue is there here. So this is how I can upload. Let me uh, look into why I am not able to load this data here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fine. No issue. Okay. So uh, any other uh, queries here? Uh, same way so just we can uh, write ask to write a uh, generative ai to write for, for me to yeah. upload this one read so yeah. same way no so just same, only that same thing same thing, same thing. Only also or you can ask uh, you know do you want to use a uh, generative ai just let me mm. check it. see click on this generate okay here also you can ask okay so write a program to read c SV file. Okay, so this is a program to read a CSV file. Okay, so uh, basically, you know, uh, with pandas. So pandas are using for to clean the data. Yeah, yeah. Basically, these are libraries in your uh, 
Python, which is the clear the data. So just uh, let me get its path, copy path. Okay, so just uh, replace this path. Okay, just click on. Run. So the data gets loaded here. There is some issue, you know, in reading the file. So okay. what is the issue? Pandas has PD. Just I need to give this. This is the syntax. Again, the issue is again uh, PD dot read the CSV. Upshala raw data. Okay, it's not able to read the file. Properly. This is not a CSV file. XLS. Ah, this is not a CSV file. Very good. So this is an Excel file. Hope you are able yes. to understand, right? Yes. So you yes. can't read. You are using a read function. Uh, it's a CSV. CSV, but you give the CSV file. Okay. Yeah. So that is a problem. So you need to upload the CSV file. So mm -hmm. we have uploaded the what do you call the XLS file. Excel. Okay. So this is the problem. Let me upload Superstore. Okay. This is Excel. This is also Excel. Uh -huh. Okay. This is this is your CSV file, comma separated values files. Okay. So it has given eighty six GB space for you. Okay. It's uploading the data. If you write a uh, program here to clean the data, so then it will clean the data from the raw data, or it will how it will work. Data and it will display on the panel. Then you can download it also. For everything, uh, you know, okay, clear. Yes, you will be writing the code. Okay. Now, see here when I double click, I'm able to see this data here, data set here, right side. Mm -hmm. This is your raw data. Now, let me copy the path. Okay, so this is mm -hmm. how. Okay. Uh, same thing. Same thing. What we did in Jupyter. Here also we can do the same. So mm -hmm. actually, it is displaying only first five rows and last five rows. See, this is. But when we export, all the value will come up in Excel, right? So only the five values will come when yes. we are exporting the data. Yes. It is showing only ten, one to ten out of this many rows. Yes. If you want to filter it? You can filter. Okay, how many rows you want to show? All these things you can do this. Can I export this file as well from this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Number of things. Don't worry. So uh, we have separate uh, classes for pandas okay, mm -hmm. where we will spend huge amount of time on pandas. Okay. But I won't start your Python right now. Okay. So mm -hmm. I'll be starting your uh, Power BI. Okay. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't worry, we use the uh, concept of this uh, Python in your Power BI. Okay. So we have mm -hmm. separate uh, language for your Power BI called DAX. Okay, where we'll be focusing okay. tax programming in Power BI, which is a very powerful programming. Python, okay. as I told you, see whatever these tools are doing, okay, the same thing we can do with the Python. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. for this purpose, yes, you need to understand the Python, but however, you know, you won't get an opportunity to implement these things in real time. Okay, as a data senior data analyst or uh, all these things, but when you work as a machine learning engineer, yes, you get an opportunity. Right? Okay. So this is about your today's class. Okay, so uh, uh, what do you call uh, regarding your uh, the same thing we have mentioned in your notes. Basically, this is about your Jupyter notebook, how to set up. Okay, so step by okay. step. So I think uh, yesterday uh, you inform me to will go through that lead data cleaning, the objective and why it's necessary. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. <clears throat> and there are some concepts. Uh, yeah. So, uh, as I told you, you know, uh, see, uh, this is about your collab. Then we'll be, uh, see, once I finish your Power BI, I'll be starting your data cleaning with Python libraries. Okay. These are okay. the four libraries where we'll be discussing. Okay. So, okay. there are many Python libraries, uh, you know, uh, countless number of Python libraries. But, however, uh, you know, the Pandas is very popular. Okay. So, hmm. uh, we'll be discussing uh, which, are, which are very important later. Okay. Now, okay. why we need to clean the data? See, this is nothing but your, uh, what do you call, uh, you know, uh, uh, one in eight, one in hundred bad data principle. See, if you are not, if you observe your, uh, you know, this is nothing but pyramid. Okay.
okay where yes. you have lot see you have lot amount of impurities here okay, okay. so because of this because here you have lot amount of uh, what you call impurities you neglected the cleaning of data because of this see the cost of cleaning the data that is because of this uh, huge amount of impurities okay the bugs what you are getting or the errors what you are facing okay in the applications okay in order to fix those errors it will take around 100 dollars okay okay now if you go on increasing the that is if you go on reducing the impurities that is if you go on increase the quality of the data by cleaning data cleaning now see here mm -hmm. the data has been cleaned to the some extent okay, uh, okay. In, uh, compared to this actually okay so what is happening okay the 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 what you called uh, whatever the fix whatever the bugs or errors you are getting the cost to fix those you know bugs or errors it is only ten dollars why that right. is drastically there is a reduce there is a reduce in your uh, cost of fixing the errors okay why because okay. you have increased the quality of the data by implementing the data cleaning te technology okay similarly okay. see here the top of the pyramid tip of the pyramid maximum you know 90 percent of your data impurities has been removed and you have very less percent that is only 10 percent of the impurities okay because of the 10 percent also you get an error but the cost of fixing that error is only one dollar one dollar mm -hmm. that is as you go on increasing the data quality okay the cost of fixing the errors will be go on reducing that is always you need to give the importance this is the importance of your data cleaning if you are not okay. your data finally if you are generating your report and deploying your client something happens there the cost of your project will be double triple okay so okay. this is very very dangerous for your project or for your companies okay that is the reason why data scientist or data analyst will play a very key important role in every company where he will spend most of his time in the data cleaning he will prepare his data so without right. preparing the data he won't go out what you call it's it's mere waste of doing a number of things this is nothing but one to hundred bad data principle that's it okay 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 got it so uh actually uh mr sabit was telling me that uh, you're traveling somewhere right so uh -huh. you know, yes sir. from tomorrow i will be traveling to kedarnath so oh. that's what i was i'll back on uh june 3rd Okay. One week I'll not be available. June third I'll I'll come. Uh, from fourth we can start resume the. From fourth we can start. No problem. No issue. Hmm. Okay. So whenever you find time, you know you can just go through the you know. I'll uh, go to recordings and. Uh, can... I have received the textbooks as well. Yeah, so, yeah. so I'll I'll. I have recommended Sami to first, uh, forward those textbooks. These are very very important. Okay, mm -hmm. so basically, uh, you know, these are as per the Microsoft standards. Okay, even okay. the authors they work for Microsoft. Okay, uh, okay, and you can really you can enjoy the content. Uh, basically, why we see why we give textbooks and all to uh, have one guidance. Okay, so mm -hmm. what to study, what not to study. Basically, uh, to make you a bit familiar regarding the concepts. Okay, okay. but be care of every stuff in the training. Okay, textbook is for your reference. Whatever you want to do, mm -hmm. right? okay. Sure, I'll <laughs> have a glance on. Uh, I'll yeah, go yeah. with the micro uh, Microsoft Power BI. I just have received no. I just received three textbooks. Yes, that Microsoft Power BI textbook is very powerful actually. Okay. Okay. That is, okay. That is ultimate textbook. What even I suggest for everyone because even he's one of my colleague actually. So he has okay. written textbook in Microsoft. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a very popular actually. Okay. So okay. basically. Uh, okay, if you go through the textbook, you can clear your interview questions. Interview. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay. Right. So there are many. Don't worry. There are many textbook. I think uh, we have suggested textbook for your first semester. Okay. Okay. Now we get into machine learning again. There are many textbooks and many learning resources. Okay. So sure. standard textbooks. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. There are many standard textbooks also, but I don't want you to uh, make use. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are very really standard textbooks where they start from uh, very uh, advanced concepts, which I don't want you to uh, get into that. So okay. you can follow these textbooks whenever uh, you are free. You can just go through that, but we will cover everything. All the sure. Okay. Oh. All, right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, Rithvi. Thank you. Bye -bye. Happy journey. Happy, have a safe journey. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Take care of your health. Bye -bye. Sure. Yeah. Bye bye. Thank you.